Hi there, this is Mar Haddad here. In uh, this uh, video, I just want to show you how you can uh, enable Telnet on the Cisco iOS router. So Telnet is to be able to configure and monitor the uh, Cisco router remotely. That means if you are sitting in, uh, for example, at your home and you want to connect to the router, which is in the office, then you can do Telnet. But also in case you are not very close to the router, even though in the same company, but you have connectivity to that router via the network, then you can Telnet to it to be able to configure it or to make some troubleshooting. So in this lesson, I'm going to show you how you can enable Tenet. So let's go directly to the lab scenario. And as you can see, this the lab scenario is very simple. I have my computer, which is my laptop, connected to the fast Ethernet 0 over 0 of the router. And uh, this router has an IP of 10.0.0.2 on its interface on this one. And uh, this one has 10.0.0.185. So this is uh, how it is now. I have reachability to router 1. And we need to check uh, later that I want to be able to connect to the router via Telnet. All right. So uh, let's directly start uh, working on the Cisco router and see how to do that. But before that, I just want to show you that if I go to my PC, and if I go to the uh, comment prompt, and if I ping to 10.0.0.2, you see I have a reply. Very important that you always should have reachability to the router in case you want to tell that to it. If you don't have reachability, how can you tell that? So that's why I have just put a cable here, but in your cases, you may be maybe connecting to the router via the internet, maybe connecting to the router via the VPN or whatever, but you should have reachability to this router. Now, very important to mention something about Telnet, that everything you do on Telnet, it will be sent as plain text. So they're not encrypted. So any configuration, anything you write when using the Telnet session, then everything will be as plain text. That means clear text. In case there is anyone sitting in the middle, he can intercept what you are doing. That's why I don't really advise to use Telnet, but to use SSH because SSH is more secure. And I have another lesson speaking about the SSH. All right. So now let's directly go to the router and start doing the configuration so we can enable Telnet. So we go to the router on the router one. I have to write. Let me just put the picture also so you can see what I'm doing. So I have to write configure terminal and over here I have to write line VTY zero and question mark here so you can see how many lines I can use so you see I have from zero to 903 that means in total 904 lines that means what that means if I make here line VTY zero to 903 that means that 904 concurrent telnet sessions can happen to the router and that's really a lot all right that means we have to make it less. I just want to, for example, say, and I want it from line zero to four. That means only five simultaneous uh, sessions of Telnet can happen to the router. That means five different person, they can Telnet to the router at the same time. All right. So here I can make it less. But if you want to, or you think that you have more engineers that they want to connect uh, to the uh, router as Telnet, so you can increase this number. But in my case, I just want to make it line VTY zero to four. That means five sessions. And then I have to say here the password. So I put a password, which is, uh, let's put it simple. One, two, three, four, five, six. Of course, if you have a router on your protection network, please don't use this password. Use something more strong. And then at the end, I have to say login. So that's the only thing that I need to do for the Telnet to be enabled. Now let's go to the PC and let's go to this software, which is Putty. Putty is a free uh, wire software. You can download it from the internet for free. And uh, it is really good to, to be able to do Telnet or SSH or even console. So I will write 10.0.0.2. And I want to tell that you check tell that then here the port becomes 23. That's the default port on the Cisco router and then open. And here we go. It's asking you for the password. Let's put one, two, three, four, five, six, enter. And I'm inside the router. You see, I'm inside R1. So this is a very nice way how to be able to configure Telnet because it's straightforward and now we can configure the router remotely. But before I finish this lab, let me just show you that if I open more than uh, four, four or five sessions actually, what's going to happen? Tell that. So I'll go to putty again. We have one session open. Let's open another one. 10.0.0.2.23. Let's copy this one so we don't write it every time. 
and I put one, two, three, four, five, six. So this is session number two. Now session number three, and we say telnet, and this is the password. So we are able to connect. So now we have three sessions open. Let's open the session number four. And it's possible still, so you can see I'm able. Now five, let's check. And it's also still possible. Now let's see the six. Actually, this one it should not be possible because it is number six. But let's try turn that and open. And here we go. You see, it's not opening. Why? Because we have uh, limited the VTY lines to be from 0 to 4. That means 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 sessions that can be open at the same time. So that is what I wanted to show you in this video. It's a simple video just to show you how you can configure Telnet on the Cisco iOS. Again, Telnet works on the plain text. So I highly advise you to not use Telnet, but instead use SSH. And I do have another lesson on uh, YouTube, but also on my uh, website speaking about the uh, SSH. So I hope that uh, this uh, video was informative for you and I will see you in some other videos.